Our first refine will be Effie. That's the one I'm personally most excited about. Ultimate made Effie. 40 plus 10 plus 10. This is actually a maxed out one. Wait, uh, it's a maxed out speed one. All right, is this about make some sense? We have this Effie with plus speed. Uh, that's very interesting. I, I don't believe I've ever seen a plus speed Effie because I don't know, but we'll see. Effie's Lance. At Star Comet, if units HP is over 50%, grants attack plus 6 during combat. That's good. That's both phases, and she has a lot of HP after all. And then. It's pretty free. Yeah, it's pretty free. Do you, units during units first combat in player phase or enemy phase inflicts attack. First combat. It's based on the new kind of weapons then. Uh, weapons yeah, and skills. Those, summer um, weapons. Summer weapon three houses. Summer bioweth. Yeah. Inflicts attack defense minus five on foe and neutralizes foe's bonuses to attack defense during combat. Oh wait a second. That's not. That's not crazy good because it's. It's a mixture of lull attack defense with. Um, that whole new summer weapon idea. Which armors can't use lulls, by the way. Yeah. And there is no uh, positioning requirement associated with this either. Right, so you can armor ball it or you can go solo. But right. it's only first combat in player phase or enemy phase, so this Effie's not sweeping teams. Which is. Think oh, about where Effie is most commonly used, though. Well, I, I mean, still use Brave Lands cool. Effie, so I don't know. Oh, I've seen. With a brave gold build, then you might have better times using that even still. Yeah. Effie is most common in Arena, really. And so th this Refine seems most geared towards Arena. Yeah. Because mm. more often than not, you're only getting one combat per phase anyway. Okay, sure, but it, let's unit. think about uh, the Effie's most common Effie's I've seen. I've seen like a lot of DC Effie's with um, Berkut's Lance, for example. And in those cases, if you replace Berkut's Lance with Effie's Lance, you're not giving up much in terms of dropping... Uh, well, it would be 7 res versus dropping their attack by 5, so it's close enough. And of course, you take away their buff, so yeah, it's very close. But in that case, though, you're only just tanking one hit. You can't really fight more than one. Otherwise, it just becomes attack plus 6. Yeah. More, often than not, worst, yeah. Yeah. more often than not, no, though, Effie is getting a 27 might weapon. Yeah, if you want to put yeah. things into perspective, Effie has 40 base attack, 56 with her lance, 62 with her lance's base condition. 67, effectively, with the defense penalty, and then 73 attack, unmerged, free to play, on a death blow. Right. So, it is pretty interesting in respect that Effie can probably just kill them in one shot, but again, she is still armor, which means she's if she's running DC or something, she's either taking the hit and counterattacking. If she's not running DC, then she's just beating melee heroes, which is probably the best thing you can do, but attacking new heroes as, as a armored, unless you have another a armored ball with you, or... A, somebody to give Effie extra movement. It Which works, it's just there are a lot of awkward situations. Yeah, well, you can also give Arm March Seal now, so... Yeah. There, there are a lot of options that the Refine is... It can be a little awkward at times, depending on how positioning ends up working out, but it's still something that's decently solid and makes her most frequent use across the player base even better. Okay. As long as you're not juggernauting with Effie, which right. not everybody does, some people do, you're probably going to have a very good time with this weapon. Which, speaking of which, uh, this is exactly what I was talking about. DC, Special Fighter, QR, I, well, most people don't go as far as using Special Fighter, but that's even better. This is the kind of build I'm much more used to seeing. So in, in effect, as long as she's not fighting more than one opponent every phase, she gets another um, 11 extra attack, which takes her to 73. And her defense and res goes respectively to uh, 44 and 34. Not bad. Not bad. Mm, I was kind of expecting a bit more, but it's still good. It just makes her into a, a hero that's trying to one-shot, which goes back to like running like Deathblow 4 on her or something. It's kind of how she was designed to be anyways. Wait, that is true. She comes with Deathblow. Wait, no, does she? She comes, she comes Death with Deathblow and Wary Fighter. Okay. Literally, the entire point is to one shot, and if not, only take one shot. Right. Okay. Well, it fits her original archetype. I was interested in seeing what would happen because in earlier years of the game, it was Brave Lance Effie, and then in later years of the game, it was like DC Effie. Oh, this is yeah, a pretty was, cross I, in between. I, I think this is kind of like the middle ground where she's hyper offensive, but also kind of tanks. Okay. Which you didn't have before. That's fair. Well, uh, fair, fair or fine. I don't think it's bad. I just wasn't thinking it was going to be this. Yeah, no, I'm definitely surprised. Pleasantly so. 
I'll definitely say, if you're looking for a unit to super tank, ironically, it's Gwendolyn, because of her consistency and her weapon. Right, that's yeah. that's that's the thing. Like, I think Gwendolyn super tanks really well, and Sheena especially super tanks really well. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Anyways, fair enough. Okay, sorry for all the delay. Bowser Shock. 40 plus 2. Oh, wow. It looks super cool. I can already see. That's a form. That's a... It looks super creepy. That's a super creepy form. 40... Wait, okay. Just open it up. I will. So this is a 40 plus 2 Rajat with plus speed. You're pretty lucky to even get plus speed Rajat. I actually want Rajat. It's just when, as time passed on, there was no point for it. All right, that said, obsessive curse. Effect against cavalry foes, inflicts speed, res, minus 5 on foes within two spaces during combat. That looks really familiar. Well, the, not, the effective parts from her original were fine, but the speed res minus 5 looks pretty damn familiar. We just had that on... Um... That was Green Oldwin who had that, and that was only when initiating. Right. Right. That was on Blink Dome. Right, but it was also on the Summer Heroes, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It was on the um, first Summer Wave. Right. So, I also expected her to have something like this just because, uh, wasn't Tharja the first hero to have, like, passive debuffing? Attack speed. Yeah. Minus Attack four. Attack speed minus four during combat on Tharja's Rip. refine. Yep. yep. Rips that one. So, makes sense for Rojat to have something similar. Speed res minus five helps. Uh, well, attack, attack speed minus four helps with um, more protection, especially, but speed res minus five is more offensive in nature, so. That's good. It really boosts up her attack and speed, which were okay, but now they're heading to pr towards pretty good territory. Additionally, after combat, if unit attack, deals 7 damage to target and foes in 2 spaces of target. What? And inflicts status on those foes preventing counterattacks through their next actions? Wait a second, that's like... That's too... That's too... As a mage. It's literally Van and Edge. What the... Yeah, Kemp is a green infantry mage. That is so goofy. That is rude. That is a pretty good refine, honestly. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I I like that a lot, actually. Yep. Uh, I was gonna and say that's it's actually it's two not strictly effects. savage. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it's not strictly. Sorry, right. That's, yeah, that's not strictly savage blow either, because that's both phases that works. Right. Right. So this is okay. If anyone, if anyone, uh, oh god. Ugh. If anyone's been paying attention to like uh, when when Kemp's being used and how he's being used, there's all there are a lot of situations where he can just catch you off guard and your entire team, because Kemp, whether he uh, gets the kill or doesn't get the kill, he drops a, a non counter attack status on you and that can screw up entire teams, mm -hmm. especially in Ether Raid. So Rajat automatically has become a, a much better use, a much better hero, and because she also has effective against, yeah, there's a lot of reason to use her now. If you're looking for a more offensive version of Kempf, because Kempf's offenses are not amazing. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking for a mage that you can use like the mage Rage ball to actually my like first donation one round. She gets a refine and so happy. Check your friends for mine. <laughs> Thanks, Skull Trophy. <laughs> I'm also yeah, glad she got a refine, because she's really Deserve. interesting as a character for me, but yeah, I couldn't go for her, because there was no reason to. I only got her by pity break. I would but... say most people were like that. Yeah. Nah. Rajat went from, oh my god, why am I getting this? I hate this, to, hey, this is actually pretty good. Right. Yeah, it's pretty alright. At the very least, not even refining it, she gets an extra 5 attack speed, effectively, during any and, combat. And maintains effectiveness play. against cavalry as well. Yeah. Right. So For the... perspective's sake, mm -hmm. Rajat has the 4th highest attack of green mages, infantry. Um, this puts her up to basically 54 attack and 39 speed perpetually at Wow. Base. Additionally, for those who are actually hoping to be able to build up Rajat, she will be in focus on roll. December 20th for the revival cycle. Correct. If you want to wait for good rates. I, yeah. She might be worth it if you are willing to go far enough to run her in the Rate team. Because in a mage ball, she can be uh, access to like instant specials because her HP is not great, and and yeah, if she has an instant special and she has obsessive curse, she can, which is something Kemp can't do. He can't get an instant special, so she <laughs> does provide you value. It's a different flavor of Kemp that fits a lot better in the mage ball setting that we've already established. If you want to just go straight out, get her to one shot somebody, and then make sure that her allies can't. Because then, like, you can make sure that they can't vantage sweep you afterwards. 
right. Goodwin Hardy bearing on Rajat, and then that just goes to that goes crazy. Right. Which is pretty good. Right. There's yeah. Like even, okay. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's so much utility here. That's I'm surprised. This is this is my favorite refine those thus far, but it's my only the second one. But I like it. One. That's really it's, good. It is a really sweet refine, honestly. I'm happy. With that said though, this build fully utilizes it because even if you fail to kill, 30 impacts will keep you alive, most likely. I mean twenty one defense, thirty seven HP. That's not great. But with three impact you're likely to survive. Uh, and then brazen attack speed afterwards. Wow, this this is a good build. Not a bad build. A little weird to be putting in your offense. Yeah, this is more a defensive build, I would say. Savage Blow and Obsessive Curse stacked together as well. So I like this, actually. That's 14 extra chip damage to uh, enemies within two spaces. She's probably going to survive and drop the non counter attack status on. Fair enough. And you get that because you're plus speed and Obsessive Curse gives you effectively more five more speed and five more attack. You're actually not, you're hitting pretty hard. Your effect on calves. You can put non counter attack status. You can do some chip damage and can get into brazen fairly, fairly safely. It's a, it's a fair build. Yeah. I'm actually tempted to build a Rajat myself and give her the three and a half staves build. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Don't exactly have the do for that right now, but if I had to so far consider anybody for do, it would Is be she better than Nino, though? Ooh, Nino's a completely different. I would say general play. I would probably take Rajat over Nino. Uh, yeah. The Nino when it comes to the meta does not like Nino right now. Yeah. The, uh, lulls and everything being all over the place, and then panic being as common as it is. Yeah. It's not kind to Nino. Though she's available. Yeah. Nino is significantly more readily available, which is a point in her favor. But with Rajat, you don't need quite as many merges against Cavalry, and Cavalry is very strong right now anyway. Yeah, uh, and yeah. Nino has awkward moments where... I I've been using her arena, and I can tell you there's so many instances where I can't use her, because she'll just die. No, no. no. Uh, For references sake, Nino is two less speed, two more speed than Rajat, but two less attack. So it's just an equal trade-off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if I were to suggest someone to bring uh, build a free-to-play Playtime hero nowadays, it would probably be uh, number one Tharja and then number two um, Odin. Odin. I was gonna say Odin. <laughs> um, yeah, they're still the same person because oh, yeah. of the buffing function. So even if he doesn't, um, he's easy to set up his playtime function, and if he yeah. doesn't, he he's buffing your team. So I I think right. he probably provides more utility nowadays. Yeah, I, I personally use Odin more than I use Nino because the attack speed link, link with defense res link is such an easy plus six to all your allies. Right. Yeah. Nino can be slightly more self sufficient if you give her odd attack wave. Right. Because then that's going to be active no matter what, but that's still one of those things where where is she getting the rest of the buffs? Yeah, see, and here's the thing. Low attack speed and low attack res. See, here's the thing. Yeah, I was going to mention are that. The most common. Odin's attack is pretty crappy, but the reality is, uh, even though Nino's attack is better, she's not killing them one shot, even if she has, um, you know, attack wave active. So she still needs other buffs, in which case then Odin has an advantage since they're both not killing. One buffs a lot easier than the other, so... You know. And I mean, Odin's a balanced tank, so you can actually kind of use him in anything, not just hyper-nuking. Right, which so... Is yeah, that that's the reason for me, and I I love Nino. It's just it's hard not to see her her faults nowadays. So, yeah, yeah, Rajat now compares really really well against her. Yeah, make no mistake, Rajat is still not the top green mage, but her utility is unparalleled for green mages, which is what makes her so interesting. Okay, but fair enough. Great Rajat. Um, Skull Trophy says he has one more. Let's take a quick look. Oh. Oh! <laughs> Whoops. Okay, um, yeah, if we're in fact talking about going all out Ooh. on Rajat. Yeah, that that's just wow. Uh, I think, of... wow. I, I think you've done it. You doubling enough people already? Uh, this is so uh, much speed. That's a Brave Lysithia, most likely. Yep. Legendary Celica, most likely. Why? Both. I mean, no, why? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm surprised right. you went this far. Did you make this just now, or did you actually have this before? Because that's crazy. That's easily the most committed to Rajat. Then. 
Yes. I'm guessing she has Swift Sparrow 3, and that's why. Oh God, just... that's a lot of speed this Rajat is picking up as well. So let's see, that's 52 59 speed, speed just from 50. her A and B, A, B, and weapon, and that's... 63 with Swift Sparrow seal. Yeah. And that's not counting Oath being active, which is really easy to do. You know. So 68 speed with Oath active if she initiates? You don't have Holy Sparrow, hell. Really? Oh, no, this is for real. Look at this. This is for uh, real. Was this was actually yeah. used. I respect wow. that. You're of a lucky few, I guess. Very, very few, and... Not as few oh, as God. some people. Uh, did you kill Rajat both? is actually one of the Burn best lower BST Congrats. arena mages now. Yeah. I will say, though, you know, I... Besides, she's being five-star locked. <laughs> Yeah, right, I will say I, I think I it packs that, best on her like, though. If you if you actually have the merges for her and you have like and you have green dual infantry available and you're not trying to stay in tier 21 all the time, Rajat is actually really good just because of the flash effect that her weapon has. Yeah, that helps a lot of getting kills. Wow. All right, props to you. Uh, the only that thing I would bad. say is put impact on just because that keep guarantee keeps her alive. And that would make her even more annoying to deal with, but that's about it. Everything else is... Yeah. You have everything. Yeah. No kidding. Seven billion twenty nine million four hundred seventeen thousand eight hundred ninety four built to Dancer Belbegan. Okay, we'll check out the rest of the heroes at the dad mine. So, uh, please be patient. We're, we're right now, we're just checking out the heroes that just got the refines. Whoa, you... Gave him the soot foil. It was expected. There's a reason for that. Okay. Well, so, I mean, that's just how his weapon works. Base wait. Weapon. I also want to ask, did you intentionally pull for Sigurd? This is a lot. I have never intentionally oh, pulled God. for Sigurd. Oh, God. I feel that. I have a plus two Sig off accidents. I have no Not Sig, so I, I'm surprised. But yeah, wow. Jeez. Good Ivy. I wish I had plus B. Yeah, I'm actually considering changing that IV, and you'll see why in a moment. Okay. Uh, Dex at right way says there's an error mistranslation, so I want to see what it yeah, is. I'll explain there that. is an error. We'll get I'll to it. I'll explain that. Okay. Uh, grants rest plus three at start combat if units HP is over fifty percent. Grants attack defense plus five during combat. That wasn't there before, so extra stats. If foe uses magic, reduces damage from magic's foe's first attack by fifty percent. So that's remained the same. Uh, and this, yeah, and it, well, we were thinking maybe it would be for fifty percent for everything, just to make him a uh, general survivalist. But I was hoping it would change to include staves as well, but that wasn't the case. I mean, I, I was expecting it to just be guild goblet, copy and paste it, but ah, uh, yes. yeah. Okay. What can you do? <laughs> at start combat, if unit's HP is over fifty percent, grants attack defense plus five during combat, and unit makes a guaranteed fall up attack. Ah. So all this extra, all, all this extra speed doesn't even matter, really. Disclaimer: It's only on foes HP for the second part. If foes HP is greater than nearing 50 percent, attack defense plus five and follow up. Not you, that's HP. Wait, it's your foes. Wait, why are you certain about? That's such a big difference. That's the translation. Yeah. Oh. Also, they, I imagine people have already put that to the test. They already literally translated. What? That's such a big error. That's a very different. Situation. They probably thought it was the same condition as the base part, which I, I thought it was. I had a that I didn't I want one easy. copy of So I Feel Your Pain, Mad Crash. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. I, I, I think that well, my initial pressure was like, oh, attack defense plus 10 if unit's healthy? It's a little weird. Why? Not what? No. It's how? That, that, that's not how. Guaranteed fall attack just means he gets another attack. Yeah. Sigurd gets a double regardless of phase, as long as the foe is remotely healthy, mm -hmm. as well as also having that sweet attack defense plus 10, potentially, and mages do not like it, ever. Yeah, I also just really like the guaranteed fall up attack, because before it was awkward, it was like, it was either Crusader Ward, which is what one of his unique skills, or QR, but now you don't have to make that decision. Now you could say, well, you could just run QR seal, but you only got one QR seal, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that Beats. speed res that speed res solo is a placeholder while I'm grinding SP. Because okay. I'm planning, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm planning on giving him bonfire for his special and then attack smoke as the budget C skill option. Wait, I'm actually surprised. Why does not fall over DC though? Because why because would you mages. Want to interrupt? The whole point of Crusader's Ward is you don't get hit. Ah, oh, you're right. Get hit. Yep. 
Ah, uh, okay. Never mind. Yeah, this slim foil makes more sense. One of the best foil users. Yeah, but then you wouldn't counter attack. Yeah. But then again, that's the power point. So. Yeah, you're supposed yep. to not die. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Sigurd is one of the only cavalry units that's capable of surviving Brave Lysithia at all. Yep. Pretty much. I mean, you know, besides Granny Shield. Well, yeah. But even without that, just the 50% on the first one, 80% on the second. And he doesn't have to worry about that, and then that's also charging up Bonfire. Yep. And not to mention Crusader's Ward, for some reason, also covers anything else that's ranged. Because yeah, so I don't know Brave what Bow, Desperation, that's all entirely covered by Crusader's Ward. And then Divine Turfing and Distant Foil will kick in as long as he's facing physical opponents on enemy phase, and he just completely wrecks house. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that actually makes a lot more sense to me, and I like it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, the, the, I like the build a lot, but I also just really like that refine. Wait, hold it's on. Cool. Hmm? It's the same refine on Self, so I might as well get it on Self right now. Yeah, if you want it. Self can have double in any phase that he wants with attack defense plus 10. But yeah. I I will say well, right now... He doesn't like, have access to Crusader's Ward, however. Yeah, I will yeah. say it makes more, much more sense on... I open your your cave. Why? Why would you? Okay, well, thanks. Reviewing refines. <laughs> yeah, okay, re it's not hero reviews right now. Yeah, though I will say I love the setup a lot. <laughs> this is a very solid setup. Now, this Sylph uses the uh, Divine Tire Fiend, uh, comp Wow, this is actually really well set up for this. This is Super an incredible setup for Sylph. Wow. I did not think about that. Yeah, you could literally use him as one of the best Swordy Gale Forcers now. Good job, Inigo. Because that is... If... 74 attack for the sake of calculating Heavy Blade on Initiation? Yeah. I mean, either the foe will get doubled, or the foe is dead. <laughs> yeah. We're looking at here. And uh, that guaranteed double, I mean, 28 speed isn't a lot, but that's still enough to double the Edelguards, for example. Uh-huh. And no, with the really guaranteed fast. double portion of it, you will break through a mirror. Oh, uh, for legendary Edelguard. Brave Edelguard, yep. not so much of a concerned, you know. Yeah, Brave Edelgard isn't quite as concerned, but that's still 74 attack coming in on the first hit. Mm -hmm. You know what? I actually really like that's this build, because the Vine Tire Fiend gives you 5 defense and another 5. Law Attack defense effectively gives you another 3, that's 13. Sturdy Blow gives you another 4, so it's effectively 17. You effectively have 51 defense, which means you're not taking much damage back in most fights. And if you're against mages, First hit is reduced by 50%, so you could take a one mage shot. For those worried about the second one, you just run Deflect Magic, sell up, and you have a bootleg Sigur. Wow. He's a lot flex. And this is it's without just, flowers, good. too. If you gave him 15, he would love every flower. Up oh, 60 attack on the gate. Who could ask for more? Right. Wow. Yeah. So, in terms of sell up, he can use this really well offensive. Well, okay. Sigur can as well, but. In terms well, of Celeth... Celeth has entirely different sets of utility for it. Yes. Where yeah. Sigurd has more flexibility with how he can use it because of Crusader's Ward. Celeth has his own ben benefits because infantry. Right. So it's not quite the Eliwood situation, simply because Crusader's Ward means that Sigurd can do things that Celeth will not be able to touch whatsoever. And cavalry. But, yeah, that too. But... Being infantry means that Selif can do things Sigurd can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, by yeah, the way, it's not, it's not a hard out class. It's just that's the easy thing to say. Hmm? People already mentioned attack, defense, solo seal. <laughs> he would love yeah, it. Yeah, that's a thing, and Sigurd would be able to use that pretty well too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, I, I really like this build. If you, in fact, yeah, if you have attack, defense, solo seal, it's used both offensively and defensively, and at that point you have. 53 defense, and if you have all the flowers, it's like 56. Good God. Your uh, offensive and defensive attack. It reminds me a lot of like Veronica, for example. Though Veronica's res is even higher, but. Uh, harmonic Veronica. But yeah. Right. That is. That's a beast. Okay. 
I like that. I like the vine tire thing a lot. It actually fits so well, and this build exemplifies it. The vine tear thing went from one of the more awkward weapons to try and use to, okay, yeah, why aren't you using this? Yeah. I mean, some of had is this miracle build. That's yeah, so actually, the miracle build sometimes. is really difficult yeah. for some people to deal with. I've seen that sweep teams. Right, yeah, at the, but at the same time, because of the guaranteed follow-up with div Divine Turfing, that makes Selif an entirely less predictable threat just from seeing him on the map. Right. Defense, I probably wouldn't give him as much credence, but in offense, he has... Basically, if you're going to use Selif in your Aether Raid's defense, for example, run your regular tier thing, but if you're going to use him offensively, run this tier thing, because there isn't much an easier follow-up condition at all, let alone on a free-to-play unit, like Selif, so you have yeah. a lot of mileage to get off that. And again, you run Deflect Magic on a Sacred Seal, you get your free B slot, and you still have the same idea as Sigurd, where you're now reducing 50-80 off mages. Mm. I just realized that's probably a dead duo, F, uh, duo Ephraim for this Selif. <laughs> uh-huh, absolutely. There's no reason why it wouldn't be. Unless I mean, unless you got Heavy Blade 4 and Gale Force from Pirate to Barn, and then Lola Tech Lola attacks Tech from somebody from else. Somewhere else. Though that's more expensive. Because if we see Deathblow 4, then it may have been Dimitri. Okay, not Deathblow 4, yeah. so it is Duo Ephraim confirmed. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> wow. Not All right. Mention, you can also go with an enemy phase build. DC, yeah. Distant Foil Selip is also an option. You don't want to go Gale Force. Like yeah, Brave Lucina I mean, supporting. Yeah, the amount of defense boosting is why I'm going for bonfire with Sigurd. Uh huh. That's ten and defense. Also, easy bonfires. Yep. Yeah. And also that. Uh, huh. That Earth blessing that I gave Sigurd was very um, deliberate as well, because hey, why not? Okay. Uh. Okay. Well, that said. Uh. Wow. That's another strong refine. A very yeah. strong refine. Um, this makes Celeth unit. <laughs> this actually catapult itself up the tier list. I would say he's now a much more flexible unit, and I think this is this actually makes him one of the better infantry units, Gen One infantry units in terms of offensive powers of of Gen One infantry. He's near the top, I would say. Then, in terms of Gen One swords, yeah. especially the free to play swords, this puts him at pretty much one of the best free to play swords. Period. Yeah, if I had to um, guess. I would not be terribly surprised to be able to see Selif and Sigurd be able to go up against Legendary Krom, for example. Oh. But that much defense and no effective weakness? Yeah. That's not out of question. <laughs> and that much defense stacking is also coming from in-combat buffs, meaning that Krom cannot get around it. Right, that's actually the big one. His actual defense is kind of mediocre, but with Divine Tyrefing adding 10, yeah, it's not hard to make it good. Legendary Leaf as well. Right. Of course. I'm looking at the free-to-play swords. I mean, unless you want to count, like, if you count Young Marth, it's pretty much just him, maybe Itsuki, and Navar. I think there's only real competitors. Oh, I don't think this is good. Being able though. to use Gale Force quite so well. Yeah, I mean, for Gale Force, Zelif is way the hell up there now. Just oh, yeah. because of that guaranteed follow-up. Right, okay. Um, as far as, yeah, as far as general utility for free-to-play swords, yeah, he's up there with Laszlo. Yeah, I, I, I think that in the short end of it is he's, in my personal opinion, top three free-to-play sword, if yeah. not top. Ironically, giving Selefin a few lets Selef double no matter what unless the foe also has it. That's also true, okay. Yeah, so true. Yeah, this is very true. Okay, so that that's why when when uh, Gamer Meverse said it was a side grade, I I disagree. Like this opens up so much. This is incredible. So to conclude, Self, excellent refined. Sigurd, excellent refined. But we got one more, don't we? To Self, careless dragon. Self, bishop of flame. Sias. Uh -huh. Sorry, Sias. Sias. Forty plus ten plus thirteen. You guys were talking so much about Self. Wow. Your fault. Uh, forty-four. Oh, well, this is all neutral. Okay, War Gods. To Wait, what? That is, oh, that is what it is. Okay, I, I was looking at Swordbreaker, I was getting really confused. Uh, at start turn, inflicts attack, res minus 5 on foot within 3 columns and 3. Oh, they increased the range by a ton. No, no they didn't. Wait, it, it isn't? It's a 3 square. columns and 3 rows. It's a square, one adjacent oh. corner. 
No, I'd, I'd rather take... Oh, uh, actually, it depends. I think for defensive purposes, that's probably not ideal. Yep. That being said, there is no res check involved with this, so it does have that as an advantage. It's but... a threat. It's threat and attack res. Wait a second, this uh... is weir weird. This is really... We they've never done that before, have they? No. Yeah, it's it's a square. So it, it's like square ploy, attack Green. res square ploy. <laughs> Wait a minute, is it what? Wait, is it like in Hulu? Wait, Hold can, on. can we actually can, get some? I, is it? Hold on, within so three is columns. It, is it oh, cardinal direction? Oh, with it's cardinal's direction. Oh, it's. We, we need um, oh, to... oh, no, 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 yeah, time out, time out. It's three columns, we... totally three rows, totally meaning that if you exist... Oh, that should be or, not done. and. Yeah. Okay, that is significantly better, just because of one word that needs to be changed. I couldn't test this out, because I do not have size or Arvis with the willing to refine them or the do. Okay, in oh, other yeah. words, it's okay. three circles, then. It, it's literally like, take Scotty and then flip it horizontally, that's your range in total. Or just like, yeah, Scotty is one way to put it, or consider or, um, you... how Peony buffs and then make that debuffs expanded into three. Okay. Or just one color. Yeah. Jesus. So basically, it's a huge radius, no res check point. Okay. Okay, so Arvis and Sias are very threatening now. Okay, so it was what I said originally. That was a huge increase in range. So yeah, some people are. Well, the translation makes it look weird, but if that's the case, yeah. that is a huge range. Holy crap! Yeah, that should be or not an. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's basically a giant cross. Yep. Yeah. There you go. For both of them. Size confirmed Jesus. You're in the cross range. You get debuffed to all hex. And then you this get smited. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Sias and Arvis are capable of covering an entire map with Together. Yeah. Wow. Actually, this build is actually pretty good. If you just line somebody up, speed minus five, defense minus five, attack, res minus five, that's, that's already 20 plus five because res is minus five. 25 extra damage. Yeah. Uh, so that would put him up to 78 attack. 84. Wow. Sias has, for uh, reference, Sias has one more defense and res and one less attack speed compared to Arvis, but I think he has four more HP. This is correctly. actually very cool because the problem of Sias and Arvis was just that, hey, you have great res and almost nothing else. You're one and two. Yeah. Yeah, you have great res. Arvis has recovering. That's it. That's it. That's it. Like yeah. they, they couldn't really make utilization of, even if with all deploys they couldn't really do much with it. Uh and then I just figured it out. That was actually a smart move because this is the only I actually don't see another way of them fixing the characters. It seems like the one of the only ways to do it while being unique, which is the biggest thing for me, because they don't right. yeah. copy paste a lot of things, but this is cool. That is a now so much better refined knowing that. That is insane actually. Yeah. Arvis is a huge threat now. Like I said earlier, there aren't a lot of great free-to-play red mages. It's like Lelina, Iago, or Ursa. And Wait I think a second. Arvis is immediately evolved. Wait himself. a second. Uh, I just realized, if you run Arvis in, like, Aetherade's defense, he's actually so annoying to deal with. If he has... Number one, he's debuffing a lot of t A lot. But uh, number two, you have his uh, healing ring, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, his HP is awful. It's 33. Right, right, that's but true. But raids can kind of mitigate that. Yeah, if you have enough, um, yeah, if you have enough mythics, as long as he's alive, he's gonna be annoying. Yeah. That, like, will just keep him stalling. And of course, there's no check, you're just losing stats. Making things like Thrazier or, or you a lot more potent, because there's the no synergy reason Synergy that he's gonna be able to realized. have. Yeah. Yeah, well, actually, that's kind of... Yeah, if you're running on dark, wait, that's also smart. Dark, that's where he should be, I think. Dark yeah. or anima, because with oh, actually. Uh, anima, he'll synergize with Thracer. Right. Yep. As Doesn't Legion matter. mentioned. Right. I just and like Yoon because Yoon's coverage. Easy. Same here, I love Yoon. But Thracer, I mean, most people assume if you're fighting against Thracer, you're debuffed. 
That's just how Ether Raid's defense tends to go. Yeah. This only further enforces that. Okay. You're just screwed. Okay. Uh, very good. Uh, your build kind of sucks. Just uh, change this. If you give him a lol, it's even better. But yeah. I, I like the build. I, am, I like the impact impressed. at least. Huh? Oh yeah. I'm very impressed that you actually have already committed to plus ten size. Yeah, that's actually true. This is just happy just... Sia Scott wow. fine, unlike Mayo. Kana yeah. Oh, wow. Take a shot at Kana as he's leaving. But yes, true. There, There is one more person who actually did, in fact, send an Arvis. Great. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Honestly, the oldest oldest Ooh. school build, Arvis build, was always Fury 4 recovering, so... Yeah, you just heal takes it, it all back level. in one turn. I mean, it can still work. Jesus, 40 HP at plus 10, plus 15. I told you. Ouch. With an H... Is that Which an H of us? Yeah, still? squad no, ace AJ2, so attack defense attack plus defense. 2. Oh, that's within... Yeah. Surprise. But yeah, it's that is 60, 64 huh. attack. That is respectable. And with now the new Valflame, he's actually in the territory of maybe he can one-shot you if he gets a debuff. 79 attack. For basically existing your Arvis. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And of course... And then of course... Fire Blessing. <laughs> Oh wait! <laughs> of no, I was gonna say, of course, like fire that. blessing. What, were, what else are we? Using? Of course. I mean, oh. realistically, I would use him in ether raids, but there's no better blessing for him. <laughs> yeah, know, and a... he's one of the units that would actually be able to go up against legendary Celica very well oh, because yeah. of this refine now. So yeah, no. I I think that the Arvis fans are happy. I think that all of the fans, besides the Effie ones are very happy with this. I think the FE ones At are a bit confused, that's, to be honest, that's, that's all I think. I think <laughs> They'll get used to it. I, I think that, it. I think it's okay. I think it's okay for them. It's better scoring than a generic weapon anyway. Yeah, you, at the very least, FE doesn't take as many inheritances to be at the top of the <laughs> score potential. Killer Mario 64, Julius fans crying though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're on Suicide Watch. It's gonna be a while before we see that. Oh god, Ether. <laughs> My favorite is this this bottom right. Yes. <laughs> That's refined. Like I said, it's janky. This is janky, yeah, okay. <laughs> Alright. I, well, I mm -hmm. did not think it was Effie's refine that would be the weakest because these translation errors I did not know about until I I was operating for like two hours and most of these refines are bad. I'm wrong. <laughs> wow, yeah. The the translation errors make these look significantly worse until you realize, oh wait, these are wrong. This is what it actually should be for mm -hmm. Arvis and Sias specifically. The translation error for Sigurd is not quite as much of a big deal, Yeah. but it's still one of those things where it's like, okay, yeah, it, it can affect things because that way he's not losing out on both he can lose out on one or the other. It's not likely at all that he'll lose out on both. Yeah. Right. So, okay. So, let's and, just rank it. Um, we, I think number one is Rajat. Oh! I think for most people, I'm... Yeah, no kidding, gamer. Um, if I had to say, I think it's actually Divine Tier thing for most people is at the top. Because of Selif. Like, yeah. guy, I have to do include in free to play stuff. Because you have to yeah. consider Rajat is a snap two star, five star unit for book two. See, here's Very the thing. Yeah. I thought I was going to be the unpopular one saying that. Because <laughs> I actually agree. I think, it, for me personally, I think Rajat is actually the one that impressed me the most. Because I, yeah. I did not expect her to have something like this. I'm yeah. extremely so, impressed. It's just that not as many people. That, yeah, it's not as accessible. I agree. Yeah. And there is an so, equivalent in um, camp. Yeah, but not factoring in accessibility, Rajat just goes from one of the most undesirable units in the game to, oh god, I wish I could still pull her. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's like, relatively speaking, as far as Rajat's is probably the biggest, maybe right. Silas. No, I, I think it's... I sucked. Yeah, I think Silas sucked. And also Sigurd kind of, mm -hmm. nobody used him at that. Yeah, he. But at least he had yeah. a he had a niche. I can see Sigurd seeing a resurgence in use because of Divine Tear thing. Absolutely. It's more likely to go to Selif than Sigurd, but I can see it happening. 
Absolutely. He is still, at this point, one of the better offensive sword caps, yep. even if he's yep. not the one who will most appreciate it. Yep. If we're factoring in accessibility, yeah, Divine Tear Fing is yeah. the best out of all of them. But if we're not factoring that in, I would say Obsessive Curse is the most powerful out of these three. Yeah, out for me personally, five. I'm thinking Obsessive Curse too, just because of how much it offers you in Ether Rates especially. Like, that is... That, that could yeah. make some annoying combinations, especially those mage teams now. I'll take the minority here and say Divine Tear Fing over Obsessive Curse, if only because there's a lot more, like, general consistency to using that over Fair a enough. potentially counterable Poison Strike Flash. Yeah. Though I would say Obsessive Curse comes second. Yeah, yeah, I would argue, yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I think those two are at the top two, but that's not nothing to say about War God's Tome or a Valflame. They're both amazing. Uh, that is a big game changer. You suddenly made two of the high res heroes. Like, they only had res, essentially. Back in the day, we were just like, oh, just drop Iceberg on them and hope that gets the kill. No, not yeah. anymore. This is they, they can actually hold their own very easily now. I find it funny they don't even use the res stat that they have. Yeah, like, it's, it's just not like, even a factor. Oh, yeah, it's, you it's actually. This? Yeah, I don't care. Let's, let's just assume they'll have are, enough res. Yeah. Smokes yeah. are pretty much their ideal uh, C and S, uh, C seals and seals now. Oh, yeah. Although defense smoke would be a little odd. It's awkward, but it does make it so that they can work with other team, uh, other teammates a bit more uh, easily. Yeah. Especially for other ones that thrive on debuffs, such as Corrin. Mm, absolutely. Okay. There's going to be so many debuff synergies, but at the bottom, poor Effie. Yeah. He's taking poor the Effie. L. Like, it, it's not L. terrible, but it's not great. It's not changing what most people are going to be using on a spray glance plus the <laughs> Gale Force. Yeah, and yeah, that's, that's the unfortunate thing. So I think if we were to uh, include it, I think it's pretty clear. Obsessive Curse or Divine Tire Free number one. And then War God's Tome, Valflame, the same thing. So number two, and then Effie's Land. Mm-hmm. Absolutely.